Be sure to subscribe for your chance to win a custom leather playmat when we hit 2,500 subscribers. Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games Community Discord as we are playing over the internet. If you're watching this in the future, way back in the day in the pandemic, if society is still standing, congratulations everyone. I'd like to think this is part of what helped make it through is trying to bring some normalcy back and having some fun at the tables with such an awesome community. And we've got Sean squaring off with, I'm not actually sure what he's going to be on. We will find out shortly versus David on Elves. And some proper old school mats here. We've got what looks like uh, maybe a revisiting by Dan Frazier of the the mocks in there from Sean. And then of course Recurring Nightmare for David, a card that used to be paired with Survival of the Fittest. Not so much anymore uh, as Survival is out of Legacy, though honestly, once uh, Vengevine got printed, its days were numbered. And leading out here with a misty rainforest into a volcanic island. Still a lot of possibilities here. Into a ponder. This could be anything from Sneak and Show to Delver to some type of brew. Storm. All sorts of possibilities still on the table here. David gets a draw step and is able to lead out with Once Upon a Time. Now that's a card I actually haven't used in Elves yet. That is very interesting. I haven't actually gone through that thought experiment yet to see how that would fit into Elves. I'm running it in some of the decks uh, that can support once upon a time. Cloud Post. Uh, it's also solid in Hagak. So it's a bunch of decks that can make good use of it. I'm curious to see how good it'll be in Elves. And there are a lot of Elves, but you're also very often looking for that glimpse of nature or natural order. It does give you more access to Gaia's Cradle. On that note, we are giving away a Gaia's Cradle in our Wednesday Night Legacy series. We've got that prize wheel right there in the background. We're going to be spinning that for a random player at the end of each event, uh, each Wednesday event. And at some point, somebody's going to be getting a Gaia's Cradle. Maybe it'll be this week. Maybe it'll be the next week. It'll just get more and more likely each week as other prizes come off of the wheel. But ultimately, we are going to be giving away a Gaia's Cradle that has been donated to the tournaments by Fee, a benefactor, uh, lives around here and is just a big fan of the YouTube channel, incredibly generous, and we're already seeing a nice uptick in attendance. So by all means, get something together and let's play some Legacy. Scalding Tarn added for Sean. Still not clear what he's on. We will see. I would tend to probably rule out uh, Delver at this point in my decision making I would tend to think it's less likely for him to have Delver uh, for example this brainstorm would have been much better main phase in all likelihood if he was capable of hitting a Delver of Secrets for example and getting it down a full turn earlier Delver really wants to have a turn one Delver, or at least establish some type of clock, you know, on turn two. Elves very often can just goldfish you, you know, turn three, turn four, turn five. I mean, things have to go really, really wrong for Elves not to be threatening lethal. And potentially in an uncounterable way now, thanks to Allosaurus Shepherd. A tropical island being grabbed. And yeah, he does have the Delver. That Tropical Island did feel like it's got to be Rug uh, once that is played. Uh, but just a slow start here for Sean. And David kind of stumbling so far. Yeah, just attacking with a Heritage Rude. This is not a strong start for David. He's got a Green Sun Zenith, X equals 1. Or X equals 0. 
So he's going to be able to grab another Dryad Arbor. And this is a pretty rough start indeed. Usually Elves wants to be threatening lethal, you know, turn four, throw out uh, a natural order or like a, a really big green sun zenith. Throw out a glimpse of nature that, you know, if they don't counter it, things are just going to get wildly out of hand. And this is, this is not looking good at all. Rug Delver now has a lightning bolt and a flipped Delver. And while it took a while to assemble, he should be in an incredibly good shape here. He's going to be able to take out either one of these before David gets to untap and utilize any type of mana. And a Tarmogoyf coming down. I got to imagine we're going to see that lightning bolt take out probably the Dryad Arbor. That does guarantee to get mana off the board. Heritage Druid. Things can go much, much worse with the Heritage Druid. But the Dryad Arbor is guaranteed mana. And at this point, Sean just needs to make sure that things stay reasonably controlled for a couple of more turns here. Got a Birchlore Ranger, and that, that could actually allow for another elf to be played here. A one-drop elf as Birchlore Ranger has Summoning Sickness, but the ability on him doesn't actually care about that. And there's the Allosaurus Shepherd. That is a dangerous card, and if I was playing against Elves right now, I don't even know if I would assume that they're going to have access to that card just based off of how tough it is to come by right now. It's really just in Jumpstart, and everybody's just waiting on that reprint. We could see a Natural Order on David's turn just with what's on board, and it would be uncounterable. It wouldn't be lethal, but in combination with very little else, it would be pretty horrifying. And it looks like Allosaurus Shepherd getting taken out. Sean, two cards in hand, likely Force of Will and a blue card at this point, with the amount of sculpting that he's done. I don't know that we have any other knowledge from the top of his deck. Delver revealing a lightning bolt previously. And two mana for an Elvish Visionary to draw a card. That is going to get dazed. Denying the card draw and denying the blocker. And this is going to be very close to lethal. Down to just two. Three damage for an Oko. And uh, I would not be surprised to see Oko elk this Birchlore Ranger just to make certain. I mean, it's totally fine. Yeah, that that is how I would have played it as well. I mean, Birchlore did give the most potential for things to go sideways. And Sean only needs to hold on for one more turn for this Delver to deal the final three damage. And we are on to game number two as Sean on Rug Delver picks up game number one. Got some mulling here from David. I feel like Glimpse of Nature probably much, much better when Allosaur Shepherd is a... I mean, when he's on board, obviously, all your green spells are better. But, I mean, Glimpse of Nature as a card, the risk-reward ratio on it is a little dicey because it's not always, like, just a game winner. Sometimes you throw it out there and you just like brick, like draw a couple of lands and it's a disaster. I mean, that's, it's not the worst thing. Drawing two cards for one green is very, very good, but totally happens sometimes where it doesn't do the heavy lifting that you're hoping for. And I really think Allosaurus Shepherd uh, kind of incentivizes riskier plays. Like I wouldn't be averse to running, say, four natural orders if I had more access to Allosaurus Shepherd in, a, in an elf deck. But this type of matchup is complicated because 
while they can't counter it on the way down, they do have ways of removing it. So Lightning Bolt becomes a really premium card. The ability to chain lightning, you know, creatures on your turn is nice, but a Force of Will stopping a Green Sun Zenith. Sean, pretty comfortable with how the last game went when David was land screwed, going to try and recreate that situation. Though, hopefully with a little bit more of a clock. Fetching here. That Tarmogoyf eventually came around and really helped the cause. But Delver can definitely take out games aided only by a Delver. And a Preordain. There are plenty of games where a Delver just swings for seven turns and that's, that's just it. You know, maybe you get a Lightning Bolt in there, turn it into a six-turn clock, but... Delver does not need to commit a ton of threats to the board. They really just need to set a clock, make sure that they don't lose, and you know win before your opponent actually wins with whatever they're doing, either in the case of Elves, likely trying to resolve a natural order, or a massive Green Sun Zenith cast in Crater Hoof, however they're going to do that. Dryad Arbor, ugh. Cast from hand, and David with another lackluster hand, not seeing that elf magic. A Delver here in the Wasteland, again, taking out that Dryad Arbor. Dryad Arbor, totally worth running. I mean, Green Sun Zenith for Dryad Arbor on the first turn allows elves access to some of the most explosive starts that it has going in with three or more mana on the second turn you can really get out of hand especially when you're talking about virtual rangers and nettle sentinels allowing for your elves to get to work right away now delver not flipping a preordain to ensure that it flips next time assuming that sean's going to be keeping both of these and another Delver, so this could be over very, very fast. This will be over very, very fast. Either David's going to find some way to strike back, have a little bit of counterplay in terms of going for the throat himself, or these two Delvers are going to flip and just wrap things up in a hurry. And I've got a little bit of a feeling that, uh, I mean, Sean is definitely favored here. Wirewood Symbiote. All right, that is a very solid reply to a couple of Delvers. It is a three-turn clock, and David's board could get wildly out of hand thanks to this Gaia's Cradle. Wirewood Symbiote can protect Allosaurus Shepherd as well, so this is a game. Ponder. Of course, flipping both Delvers. And the beatings begin, but, you know, David does have some potential to crack back a ponder from Sean. And at this point, I feel like Burn might actually be more relevant taking an extra turn off of the clock. Oh, he's got the Wasteland for the Cradle. That sets David back significantly. Two mana. That basically goes from potentially threatening a uncounterable natural order to just severely bottlenecked. And that's one of the, the great things about Delver is it, when it's running properly, it has the ability to really leverage cards like Wasteland to basically be a time walk. You know, you set your opponent back a turn, and, you know, in a draw-go game, card like Wasteland, really not that big a deal. Maybe you can knock your opponent off of a color of mana and create some card advantage in that sense, but when you've already got a clock on them and you're hitting for six a turn, each one of those lost land drops really ends up being the story at the end of the game where they're like, ah, oh, if I just had another turn, I was one mana shy. And that's very often what Delver feels like at the highest level. 
Sean swinging back. He's getting in a couple of damage. I'm sorry, David swinging back. Six more damage coming in. And David going to be fetching a Dryad Arbor. Oh no, a Bayou. Oh, maybe he has an Abrupt Decay. This could be interesting. The difference between a six turn, uh, six damage a turn and three damage a turn. Massive here. And there it is, Abrupt Decay. Killing stuff uncounterably since Ravnica returns. Since Ravnica returned for the first time, not really sure what the, the holdup here is. It doesn't really matter which one of these Delvers gets KO'd. But a Delver is down and just three damage comes across. And uh, David's bought himself some time. He has three turns with some burn. Four turns if Sean doesn't manage to draw any type of burn spell. He is pawing at that volcanic like he's got a spell to play, but I think probably showing the discipline here, what we're likely to see is a lightning bolt being thrown at the Allosaurus Shepherd in response to a must counter spell. And that would necessitate returning the elf to the hand, and then the spell would be counterable. So that is probably what's going through Sean's head here. Two more damage comes across. Sean remaining disciplined. You know, if that burn spell sticks around until David's in burn range, that's also fine. Oh, and we have a pause here. I'm going to go ahead and skip over. It looks like we're having some technical difficulties. All right. Yeah, just a frozen camera happens from time to time. A ponder for Sean. He's probably only interested in Lightning Bolt. I mean, Forked Bolt would be great, too. Any type of removal would be fine. And a Wasteland for a Dreadhorde Arcanist. Representing Lethal, but I, I actually don't like that play. I think Wasteland on the, the Bayou, much, much more preferable. Let's see how this goes. Tapping out means that whatever David does on his turn, like if he drops a Cradle for turn, this could get real ugly. Let's see what the top of the deck has in store for us. Glimpse of nature, uncounterable. Oh no. Heritage Druid. Let's get another elf down. Let's do this. Let's get crazy. Heritage Druid, Allosaur Shepherd, and one more elf is going to allow for three more mana. Nettle Sentinel would be really strong right here. I mean, worst case scenario... Wirewood Symbiote can pick up one of the Heritage Druid and then recast in order to get another card draw out of this. Oh no! Oh no, that's too bad. We didn't get to see that extra card draw. Could have been a Cradle. Who knows now? Sean did have the Bolt. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of drama there at the end. That may have been one of those instances where you feel like you just can't lose, but David could have potentially drawn into something there. Uh, but Sean ultimately picks that one up in two. Rugged Elver being a difficult matchup for Elves, even with the new Allosaur Shepherd. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more.
Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.